Today we're going to be talking about drugs used for the treatment of CMV. The three drugs are gancyclovir, foscarnet, and sidofovir. Uh, in general, the mechanism of all these drugs is to inhibit the viral DNA polymerase. Remember, again, uh, remember CMV is a herpes virus, and it so the herpes virus is too... Today we're going to be talking about drugs used for the treatment of CMV. Uh, the three drugs we're going to be talking about are gancyclovir, foscarnet, and sidofovir. In general, all the mechanisms of all these drugs is to inhibit the viral DNA polymerase. Um, just recall that the structure of the, well, CMV is a herpes virus, right? And so the structure of the herpes viruses are um, linear, double-stranded DNA. So the way it's going to replicate is through a DNA polymerase. And um, so the, the drugs are going to inhibit that. Some of these drugs can also be used for HSV, for herpes simplex. Remember, if CMV is a herpes virus, then, you know, we could see that it could be used for herpes simplex. I'll go in more to that later. And finally, in general, they all have nephrotoxicity. So if you just remember, the CMV drugs all really have nephrotoxicity. Some of them have more unique toxicities, but in general, they all have nephrotoxicity. Remember that CMV um, can also cause mononucleosis, um, like Epstein-Barr virus, um, but it'll have a negative monospot. Mono but on exams, I think you'd most likely see it as CMV retinitis in an immunocompromised patient, such as an AIDS patient. Okay, let's now talk about each drug individually. Alright, so the first drug we're going to be talking about is gancyclovir. Gancyclovir is a guanosine analog, and this guanosine analog is going to go on to inhibit the viral DNA polymerase. So let's just start, let's see how that happens. So we start with, I'll call it G prime, which is kind of like guanosine prime or gancyclovir. And the very first step is that it's phosphorylated by CMV kinase. Okay, this is the viral kinase, it's not our kinase. And that puts a phosphate at the 5 position okay, of gancyclovir. Then the next step is that the host cell kinases, which is our kinases, they're going to put on the second two phosphates because it's going to think it's guanosine monophosphate, but it's actually gancyclovir monophosphate. And so it's going to put on these second two, and then this enzyme, this gancyclovir triphosphate, is going to go on to inhibit the viral DNA polymerase. And the reason why it does this is just think about the viral DNA polymerase. It's looking for DGTP. Right? This is the enzyme that it's going to use to put guanosine in the DNA chain. So what happens is that this molecule and these two molecules, they look, they look very similar. So the viral DNA polymerase will use the gancyclovir triphosphate instead, and they'll competitively inhibit, they'll con competitively inhibit DGTP being incorporated into the DNA chain, and that'll cause an inhibition of DNA synthesis, and that's how this, uh, viral will die off, this virus will die off. Um, so in terms of resistance, there's two forms, as I say here, and this is pretty easy to conceptualize. The first one is that if you have a lack of CMV kinase, these, the, if, these viral, if these viruses mutate such so you have a lack of CMV kinase, obviously you're not going to be able to get this step, okay, and that'll, that'll cause resistance to this drug. The second way is if you have a mutation in the viral DNA polymerase such that gancyclovir triphosphate can't bind. If this guy can't bind here, then you're not going to be able to have that inhibition. So those are the two ways you can get resistance to gancyclovir. In terms of toxicity, remember that I said that all the CMV drugs have, are nephrotoxic. Well, here we go, nephrotoxicity right here. And another thing is that gancyclovir is pretty toxic to host cell enzymes, even more so than acyclovir. So you will get leukopenia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. Uh, I really don't know what happened here, but I mean, the last thing you have to know about, about gancyclovir is that there's another drug called Val gancyclovir, okay, and this is a pro-drug, and it, it has good oral bioavailability, and when you eat it, then their liver will actually pull off the Val and just make gancyclovir, so that's really the way I think about it. Valcyclovir is a pro-drug, you eat it, liver pulls off the Val, and you get gancyclovir, so you just have to know that Val, Val gancyclovir has a higher oral bioavailability. The next drug I'm going to be talking about is Foscarnet. Okay, what Foscarnet looks like is actually pretty easy if you just look at the name Fos here. So it's a pyrophosphate analog, and you just respell pyrophosphate as with an FOS, and there you go. It's a pyrophosphate analog. What is pyrophosphate? Pyrophosphate is just two phosphates, okay? It looks just like that. And so that's going to go on just to inhibit, directly inhibit the viral uh, DNA polymerase. So... So recall that, again, the DNA polymerase is looking for deoxynucleoside triphosphates, okay? And it's looking for this triphosphate, so there is going to be a pyrophosphate binding site somewhere in that enzyme, okay? So this pyrophosphate analog just goes ahead and just inhibits it just by binding to that pyrophosphate binding site. 
What's interesting about phoscarnate is that it does not require activation of the viral kinase. If you remember in, remember the last one, Gancyclovir, you need activation by the CMV viral kinase. In this one, it's just a pyrophosphate analog, so you do not need activation by any kinases. Because of that fact, remember I said Gancyclovir needs to be, well, one of the ways that uh, the virus can mutate for Gancyclovir resistance is a lack of the viral kinase. So if you have a lack of that viral kinase and Gancyclovir can't, can't work because it doesn't have that CMV viral kinase, then Foscarna is actually the second line treatment after Gancyclovir fails. For the same reason, it's also used for acyclovir resistant HSV, if you recall from the herpes drugs, is that acyclovir also needs to be phosphorylated by the uh, viral kinase also. So if that viral kinase is not there, Foscarnet will still work because it does not need that viral kinase to work. Finally, again, Foscarnet causes nephrotoxicity. And the other important thing about Foscarnet is that it causes electrolyte disturbances. So what it can do is it actually chelates calcium and can cause a low calcium. It can also cause a low magnesium just by disrupting the tubules. The low magnesium will also will actually suppress PTH. That suppression of PTH will cause even lower calcium. And that super low calcium will then cause seizures. So that's how phoscarnet can actually cause seizures. And finally, the resistance here, pretty simple again. It's just a mutation in the viral DNA polymerase, okay? It's a mutation here such that this pyrophosphate analog cannot bind. So the last drug that we're going to be talking about is sidofovir. In sidofovir, I wasn't able to find much about the mechanism, but basically it also preferentially inhibits the viral DNA polymerase, okay? So this is also used in CMV retinitis along with phoscarnet, and it's also used for acyclovir-resistant um, herpes, herpes simplex virus, and for the same reason that you could use phoscarnet for acyclovir-resistant HSV is that it does not require phosphorylization by the viral kinase. Okay, so both fo fo both phoscarnet and sidofovir do not require phosphoryl phosphorylation by the uh, viral kinase. And uh, finally is that this causes nephrotoxicity, and for that you give probenicid, okay? And that will prevent the nephrotoxicity or at least um, attenuate the effects of it. And the way there, and there's, you also have to know that it has a long half-life, and the kind of the way I remember that is that if you're giving probenicid, remember you usually give probenicid to prolong the half-life of a lot of drugs. So I just think, so, okay, so if you're nephrotoxic, this is the one that you give probenicid. If you're giving probenicid, you're probably going to have a long half-life. I mean, maybe it doesn't exactly work like that, but that's the way that I remember. But the biggest thing to remember about this is that it is also not phosphorylated by viral kinases. So let's just do a quick review of all the drugs we just learned. We have gancyclovir, which is first phosphorylated by the CMV kinase, the viral kinase, to make at the 5 position, creating gancyclovir monophosphate. Then the second two phosphorylations are done by the cell kinase, R kinases, which put on this, the uh, second two. Um, and then this competitively inhibits DNA polymerase. So remember, DNA polymerase is looking for DGTP, but it gets this guy instead, and that competitively inhibits stopping DNA replication. The two ways that we can get resistance for gancyclovir are going to be at, um, a lack of CMV kinase or a mutation in DNA polymerase, which is what we're going to see is going to be for actually all of them, a mutation in DNA polymerase, which if it hasn't been uh, evident already. The second one is phoscarnet, which is a pyrophosphate analog. This is going to go again and in, um, inhibit, preferentially inhibit the DNA polymerase, and um, it, the only uh, resistance you're going to have, again, is uh, mutation DNA polymerase. Phoscarnet and sidofovir, okay, sidofovir is the same thing. They both do not need to be phosphorylated. See, look, none, n neither of these have to be phosphorylated by the viral kinase or anything. So you can give that for acyclovir-resistant um, herpes simplex or if, if there's resistance to gancyclovir because you don't need that kinase. That's very important. All of them cause nephrotoxicity. In particular, gancyclovir will also cause leukopenia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. Uh, phoscarnet, the specific one for that, is that it can cause some electrolyte abnormalities, such as low calcium and low magnesium, which can lead to seizures. Finally, sidofovir, um, you have to code, it, get, it is very nephrotoxic, and you have to give probenicid along with it, and it also has a long half-life. And that is it for the CMV drugs.